With the Union of the Crowns, when King James decided that the lawless borders and the feared riding families that controlled them were no longer an asset and would have to be brought under control one way or another, many families moved to Ulster, where they found a place that was not so different from home. Large numbers settled in County Fermanagh, in the far west. Like the Scottish borders, it was rural, remote and far from the reach of government. Also like the borders, it was dangerous, but not in the same way. The danger to the borders was not from rival riding families, but from powerful Irish clans who had lost their local dominance because of King James's plantation of Ulster. Instead of fighting each other, these new Ulster Reavers found that they were all on the same side fighting to survive and making up the backbone of the British presence in the area. Once again, useful to the king. For 400 years, the Ulster Reavers have lived on Fermanagh, on the border of Ulster, and they have made their mark in many ways, building castles and towns and more generally shaping the society that we all know today. And they are still here. Join us as we go in search of the Ulster Reavers. Between the Scottish Wars of Independence and the Union of the Crowns in 1603, the Border Reavers made the border between England and Scotland ring to the clash of steel, the thunder of hooves and the screams of bloody murder. On both sides of the border they were professional cattle thieves, merciless racketeers and plunderers who were also fond of a good old feud. The Reavers were a product of the Anglo-Scottish conflict intense at the end of the 13th century and the beginning of the 14th century and intermittent thereafter. Given the nature of the conflict and its impact on the life of the communities within the border areas, there was little incentive to arable farming. Why plant crops if they might be burned before they could be harvested? The threat of political turbulence was a powerful incentive to pastoralism. Livestock in turn provided a strong stimulus to reaving, raiding or plundering, which became the principal business of all classes in the borders. Agricultural labourer, smallholder, gentleman farmer and peer of the realm alike. There was no social stigma attached to reaving. It was simply an accepted way of life. Apart from the Scottish Highlands, the borders were the last part of Great Britain to be brought under the rule of law. Lawlessness was an affront to royal authority an improvement in relations between England and Scotland before the Union of the Crowns led to greater cooperation between authorities which meant the region had become more peaceful. The period between the death of Elizabeth I and the enthronement of James saw opportunistic ill week raids into Cumbria by some of the reaving clans who claimed that when the monarch died the laws of the land were suspended until a new monarch was proclaimed. James was furious and issued a proclamation against all rebels and disorderly persons, stating that no supply be given to them, their wives or burns, and that they be prosecuted with fire and sword. He also required all who were guilty of the foul and insolent outrages lately committed in the borders to submit themselves for mercy before the 20th of June, under the penalty of being excluded from that mercy forever. Why Fermanagh? From one frontier area to another. With the Union of the Crowns and James on the throne in both realms, the job of pacifying the borders became a slightly easier one. A joint commission was established in 1605, aimed at curbing many of the excesses that troubled the authorities. In its first year, 79 people were hanged with scores more in the years that followed. Others were encouraged to leave, often to serve as mercenaries in European armies. Those who were viewed as the worst offenders particularly the Armstrongs and the Grahams, were singled out for special treatment. They were banished to Ireland. They eventually found their way to outposts of the plantation in southwest Ulster, and many of the names that dominated the muster rolls for County Fermanagh were border surnames. Johnson, Armstrong, Elliot and Beattie. Today, the three most common British surnames in Fermanagh are still Johnson, Armstrong and Elliot. Other border surnames like Bell, Foster, Graham, Irvine, Kerr, Maxwell, Nixon and Scott are still prominent too. These settlers arrived in the aftermath of the plantation during a time of massive upheaval, rebellions, conflict and a general hoo-ha on a massive scale. Many of the estates were populated by settlers drawn from both sides of the Scots-English border as can be seen from the names that appear on the muster rolls from the 1630s. 
One of the undertakings given by the landowners during the plantation was the requirement to build a bawn or a fortified settlement for the inhabitants of the area. This was a wise precaution given the tendency of some who would take any opportunity to settle their grievances. We see many buildings going up in this period, including castles, some of which remain to this day in various states of repair. The rebellion of 1641 and the sectarian nature of it had an impact on the attitude of many and the family saw it as their duty to maintain a martial standing or tradition. With the Williamite Wars in the late 1600s, Fermanagh was again to the fore in the defence of the kingdom, with some arguing that whilst the actions of the defenders of Derry saved the city, it was the actions of the Enniskilleners who saved the kingdom. They made particular use of cavalry, with many within their ranks very accomplished horsemen, which could suggest a familial tradition, perhaps drawn from the borders. As part of the Williamite campaign, a regiment of horse was raised from within Fermanagh, which eventually fed into the Enniskilling horse. Even in more modern times, during the Third Home Rule Crisis, for example, with the establishment of the Ulster Volunteer Force in 1912 to oppose Home Rule, the Fermanagh Battalion raised a troop of horse. Across South West Ulster, in Fermanagh and Cavan, there were a number of castles built, some of which are still standing today, although in various states of repair. Crom Castle, built by the Crichtons, building on work carried out originally by the Balfour family, due to its strategic importance, was besieged during the Williamite campaign, but it resisted and didn't fall. Tully Castle, built by the Humes, destroyed during the 1641 massacre, the family then went on to build Castle Hume. Monet Castle, built in 1618 by Malcolm Hamilton, taken by the rebels in 1641, but survived and was the residence of Gustavus Hamilton and survived the Williamite Wars. The basic plan of Monet is reminiscent of Thirdstein Castle in Lauderdale. Castle Balfour, built in 1618 by Sir James Balfour, refortified in 1652, but dismantled during the Williamite Wars in 1689 and eventually abandoned in the early 19th century. Castle Caldwell, built by Edward Blennerhasset from 1610 onwards, and the ruin shows it has had approximately three centuries of habitation. It was occupied in 1641 as during the Rising, was sold to James Caldwell in 1670. The Caldwells from Ayrshire were Williamite supporters who raised a regiment of foot and two troops of horse from amongst their tenants. They also played a key role in harrying the Jacobite forces during the Williamite Wars. Other sites include Nacarn, which was commenced by the Lawlers in 1619, who put a bond on the site before being taken over by the Irvin family, destroyed in 1641 as part of the Rising, but again rebuilt. Portora Castle, built by William Cole with work commencing in 1612-13 with a bawn and fort, held by the settlers during 1641 and assisted the garrison at Enniskillen to hold the fort. The strength and connection that came with the family name was an important feature of the Reaver story. Alliances and linkages between Reaver clans played a role in the success of many of their reaving adventures. Many of the family names expelled from the borders are present in Ulster, particularly across Fermanagh. Akalukar Burial Ground, one of the oldest in Ulster, features many reaver names, including some buried here in the late 17th and early 18th century. These names continue to be common right down to the present day. Across County Fermanagh and the rest of Ulster. Armstrong, Bell, Crozier, Elliot, Graham. Hall
Nixon. Maxwell. Johnson. Irvine. Story. BT. Little. Forster. Scott. Carruthers. Trotter. Kerr. Hume. Noble. Rutledge. Charlton. Hog. Veach. Appear across the county alongside other more common Scottish surnames. We hope this short video has whetted your appetite to explore the Reaver connections here in Ulster and we look forward to seeing you when you come across.